Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at history repeating on Bitcoin. We're looking at four turns in the market, how far we can project forward for a worst case or best case scenario when it comes to a Bitcoin low. So if you like the sound of that and you enjoy the content on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with the content. We're going through the markets right through this bearish period on Bitcoin. Like the video up, join me on Instagram for daily Q&As, Twitter for daily crypto news and trading updates. Let's dive into the charts. Okay, what we got first is the monthly chart. So I'm bringing it back to a monthly view. We do look at daily stuff quite often, but today I want to have a look at the monthly chart. So I'm using this here. This has the data back to around 2010. So that's as bad as far back as we can get. What Bitcoin has done in the past, that's what we want to have a look at first. So monthly charts so we can see major turns in the market. We've got uh, tops and bottoms here just going back to 2011 or 2010. We got October, but let's start here at June 2011 because we got data prior to this. Well, we don't have it on the chart, but there was data, just not enough to make it to a chart. This is Bitcoin back at a few cents. So we've got the price chart on the side here. We've got a top in June of 2011 then into a bottom in November, top in April, another top in November, another minor top here in June. You might wonder why am I putting minor tops as well as majors. We're looking for significant turns in the market. This is how we are uh, getting an idea of what may come next. And then we're going to measure these uh, points here. January, that is a low 2015. Now we have a couple of points here at November. June, June, December. You might ask why aren't I picking all of them? Well, these were significant turns in the market as well. Uh, these points that we have on the chart here are significant turns. I've got this here. This was the last time the market turned on the way up to the 2017 top. As an example, the market turned, we had a monthly lower low. That's quite a significant point in the market to stop the market. That's why it's important there. December, June, Notice all the Decembers and the Junes and the end of the year periods, middle of the year periods. Uh, December was this little low here before we had the COVID crash into March. Now we have April as a top. So you can see what we're looking for next is somewhere out in late 2021 to mid 2022. So where are these numbers coming from? We can see June comes up a lot. We can see November. Uh, and end of the year comes up quite a lot, November, November, December, December, another November in here. But what I'm measuring here next are our moves down. So we're looking at the tops to some major turns here. So October, essentially, that is your 11 weeks. And then we have 14 weeks. So tops to bottoms, we don't have that much data to work with. So we're going to do what, the best that we can. And I'm measuring a few other points here. This is about 12 months as well. This is a significant low to another significant low. 12 months, top to bottom, 12 months, top to this December low, six months, but then the major was nine months. And then what we're doing is just measuring it from the current top. So we have April and we go six months out, brings us to about October. Nine months brings us to January, 11 months March in 2022. And then 14 months is June of 2022. So what do we do next? Well, when do we often see market turns? June, June. This is in the mid of the cycle as well. June's, look at all these mid, uh, the June periods coming up in the mid of the cycle. June, mid on the cycle on the way down. We have June here as well before we took off again. This could be deemed an end of cycle. This was for 2011. I'll leave that there. But then at the end of cycles, we see January, early in the year or very late in the year. So that's sort of November, December, January period. November is a top, December is a top, December is a low. We had December as a mid low here. I thought this may have been the low before we had the COVID crash. It was looking like it would be setting up as a, a, pot a potential low at that point. For me, I think we could be seeing as a worst case scenario, something around the 9th to the 11th. So the ninth month to the 11th month from this all-time high. Obviously, our worst case here is June being it's around 14 months. That's the longest time frame we've seen from a top to a bottom. This was from 2013. 
even the 2017 top to bottom was less time than the 2013. So it was 2013 into 2014. That was 12 months. And so as we get closer to these dates, uh, October is six months away. We're already one, two, we're into our third month there. So we're nearly halfway. Uh, we'll be able to get an idea of what might come next. Also note that we've had a few false starts and I talked about this in recent videos. So make sure you check out those on the channel. Come back here. You can see I've got false starts, fear campaigns, all this sort of stuff which is coming through the news. Now, if you actually click into the content and have a bit of a watch, it doesn't go into FUD. We're just preparing because what the market, what the data is showing us here is that we get turns mid-year and end of year, generally speaking. We don't need to be exact with this. This is just to give us a roadmap, a bit of a time frame of what to expect coming next. So November, January, 14 months, April at the top, we now project forward or move forward those time periods. Six months brings us into, like I said, October, nine months into January, and then again, March, June. The price potential, so that's the time. That's giving us a bit of an idea of where we could be going in time. Now for price, we have support levels coming up at previous all-time highs. That's $20,000. The, pre, the, the next support level, another worst case, is down here at 14,000. So, of course, it's 13,800 or 13,900, whichever exchange you, you look at. But let's do some round numbers, 20 and 14. Worst case, somewhere around 14 months out and around $14,000. Best case, maybe somewhere around six months at $20,000. So, we got quite a big range to play with. But the long and short of it is I'm not expecting us to be uh, shooting straight up from this point considering what the market has done in the past. Even when we got this little move up into June, we were still sideways and down for nine months and then we started to recover from that point. So if I'm expecting something like we got in 2019 into 2020, the breakout happened about 16 months later, 16 to 17 months from that previous top. That still fits within what we're looking for a low or some sort of turn six to 14 months from now, market recovery and start to take out the, the old all-time high at around $65,000. Finally, for another price point using GAM, which we often refer to on the channel, we're just looking at the low to the high, 50% comes out around 34,500. You'll note that today's weekly got to around that point. We closed very close or on that $34,500 level. So this is starting to show a little more signs of weakness. Should we move up from this point? You know, what happens next? I still see a sideways movement, but I do expect people would get very excited if anything moved into the high 30s to mid $40,000 levels, even though it's potentially only 30-ish percent at best, right? So if we even went 10, 20, 30, 30% up, it still could represent a false move in the market. We got a 90% on this major move here. That was a, a jump from the low in April into June. And previous that we just saw from six and a half thousand to ten and a half thousand was about a 65% jump. And then the market still tanked. That took one to three months into that low and then another few months to recover from that point. So the main thing here is still around patience. Pretty much that's the hardest thing in the entire game, which is why I put together a bit of a brief plan to have a look at something like the fear and greed index. Have a look at that and start testing it. Thanks for your comments on Twitter as well about the fear and greed index. I'm going to do a video on that. Uh, I've got another option that I wanted to have a look at, something around actually selling and then buying back cheaper. We're going to have a look at that in another video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon does go a long way to helping out the channel. Share this content with friends and family that you I uh, think will uh, benefit from it, might help them just understand what's coming next, give them some sort of idea around patience as well. That tends to be a massive, massive problem with new investors. You're just really wanting something to happen. And that also came up in that Twitter post that I had. People were looking for other ways to buy now because they see the market settling down. And Personally, I don't see it re uh, recovering so quickly from this point just yet. And I'm still holding on with my patients, looking for lower prices. So once again, make sure you share this content, like, subscribe, join us on Instagram, Twitter, the Investor Accelerator, free newsletter, check that out down below. 
I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.